And now, Mr. Loudon, you have stated that on the morning of the day your father was murdered, that you and the hands went out to repair a broken fence. How long were you gone? All day. And on that day, did you or the hands see any unauthorized person on your land? Yes, sir. About noon, we, we saw a man on a mule cutting across our range. Is that person in this courtroom now? The defendant, Johnny Mule. And now will you uh, describe for the jury just what you and the hands saw when you returned home that evening? Well, there was some plates on the table. Two people had eaten. Pa, my father, he, he was lying face down on the kitchen floor. And there was a knife stuck in his back. knife? Yes. Did you or did you not own this knife? Yeah. And uh, did you have it with you the day you went to the Loudon Ranch house? D yeah. Well, why did you go there? To get me some money. That's why you killed him, wasn't it? No. You even sat at his table and let him feed you first. No, it wasn't me. It was the uh, other fella. What I, other fella? I don't know. It was other fella. I could... I could hear Mr. Loudon shouting. What about? I don't know. There was hollering. Uh, he stopped when I knocked on the door. And did you see this other man? No. I know there was someone there, though. They... I heard the door slam inside the house. There was two plates on the table. And that's the story you want this jury to believe. Is, um, Johnny Mule your real name? I don't know. That's all I ever was called. Did you or did you not willfully murder David Loudon on the third day of last month for $200 known to be in his possession? And did you reward his generosity with a knife in his back. And didn't you then rob him and panic, leaving the knife behind? And then, did you or not, four days after your arrest, invent this mysterious stranger in an attempt to cover up this foul and inhuman deed? Yes or no, Mr. Murderer? Mr. Mule.
I got the horse's saddle. Good. Hey, do you remember that razor strap they asked for? Yeah, I got it in the other saddle bag with Hansa's shirt and socks. Well, I never figured that jury would be out for three days. No one did. You know what I can't figure out? How come they just don't let Hansa Candy come home at night instead of keeping him locked up there in a hotel? Well, they just don't want them to discuss the case with any outsider until they bring in a verdict. I guess it makes sense. Have right, we got everything? Yep. Joe, once we get in the town, I gotta get to the bank immediately. You, uh... You take this stuff over to the hotel and I'll meet you at the courthouse. I still think I've been happy we filled these saddlebags with some of Hop Singh's fried chicken instead of all those clean socks. Where are you going to find a size 14 chicken? still out. Joe, Burge is back. When did he get it? Last night, I guess. He rode in with Cleve this morning. Well, it's been almost two years, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Has he given you any trouble? No. What was between us is long gone. He knows I'm marrying Cleve. Now he's, he's brooding about his father. Well, that's easy enough to understand. Why don't you go and talk to him? Please? Joe. Sure. Virg, I'm sorry about your father. I've been hearing that all morning. Why doesn't somebody do something about it? What's taking the jury so long? You know as much about it as I do. Your brother's in there. Why doesn't he do something? First, there's 11 other men in there. What do, you, what do you expect us to do? We heard the same thing the jury heard, Joe. Deke Sanders offered five to one that they wouldn't be out 10 minutes. No takers. I wouldn't have bet him. If I'd have been around when they brought that killer in, wouldn't be nobody waiting three days to settle it. Verge, I know how you feel, but that's what the law is for, to keep trouble from starting more trouble. I'm talking about the real law. An eye for an eye. I came back because Pa wrote me Cleve and Marcy were fixing to get married. And I come home to this. Clay, they said it's no verdict. What do you mean? The jury deadlocked. They couldn't agree. They're letting him go? You know the trial, new jury. He'll get off. You see if he don't. Hey, Candy. What happened in there? What happened? We voted 11 to 1. Guilty. Five minutes after we got the case. We voted that way for three long days. Eleven to one. Who voted to let him go? Your brother. Hi, little brother. Hi, Virg. I didn't know you were here. Oh, that's card right. The big man himself. I'm sorry you had to come home under such circumstances. Are you? Why didn't you do something about it when you were locked up in that jury room? Well, Virgil, I'm not sure that Johnny Mule did it. Eleven other men did. Well, I have to answer to my conscience, not theirs. And the law states that guilt must be proven beyond a reasonable doubt, and I don't think it was. And Pa used to call you his friend. I hope you knew what you were doing, Hoss. So did I, Marcy. Let's go. You don't have to shut me down, Sheriff. Oh, I hope old Hop Singh's got some of that fried chicken left. 
You know, there ain't nothing like that hotel food to make a man appreciate home cooking. Yeah, I guess not. If you two have something to say, I'd like to hear it right out. All right. And I thought the prosecutor had a darn good case against Jenny Mule. What do you think, Paul? Well, much as I hate to think it, what the prosecutor said made a lot of sense. Then you figure I done wrong by voting for an acquittal and locking up the jury, right? Well, it's a free country. Every man to his opinion. But let me tell you this. You two had a front row seat. You saw the show. When it was over, you got up and walked out, had a beer and forgot about it. But we had to decide whether Johnny Mule was going to live or die or not. What, well, Hustler? We sat there and we listened to the same evidence that you did. Joe, I listened to that evidence. I listened to it good. Some of it went on this side of the scale, some on that side of the scale. And after I heard the comments the judge had to make, then I had to make a decision. I had to live with it. Look, I just don't understand Joseph. why you... House is right. It's a free country. He's entitled to his opinion. Let's not discuss it any further. Thanks, Paul. Now, I'm gonna see if there's any of that chicken left in there, and I got some work to do out in the bar. Here, or are you just gonna stand around? I was waiting for you to tell me. Thought maybe you got me fired. Well, why would I do a thing like that? Well, we were at each other's throats for three days. That was during the trial. That's all over now. We'll let 12 other men wrestle that problem. You ever work one of these things? Sure. Go over here on the other end of it. that day. He admitted that. And Loudon was killed with Johnny Mule's knife. What more do you need? I want some answers. Some answers to some questions like, why did Johnny Mule leave his knife there? He panicked and ran. Oh, ran all three miles, didn't he? Didn't build himself a fire so he'd be easy to find, huh? That crowbait horse of his threw a shoe and came up lame. He ran as far as he could. If I'd just put a knife in a man's back, I'd run more than three miles with or without a horse. You do that. Johnny Mule ain't that bright. Oh. So you hang a man because he ain't bright, huh? Boss, that whole thing about him hearing somebody else allowed in his house that day. It sounds exactly like a man who's trying to cover up something. You just said he wasn't bright, now you're trying to make him clever, huh? You know, you're more than just ordinary stubborn. You could give a hard rock billy goat lessons. You're gonna work or talk? One thing for sure, the next jury will vote to hang Johnny Mule. Maybe, maybe not. He's gonna have a better lawyer this time, and maybe I can find some of the answers to those questions I want. You're hanging on the salt, Candy. If you get tired, just yell. Don't drag your feet. I'll let you rest. Thank you kindly. But if anyone uh, yells for mercy, it ain't gonna be me. You've seen the killer right up to the house. 
I saw a man on a horse. People shortcut across the range all the time, Virg, you know that? He didn't know he was gonna put a knife into Pa's back so he couldn't stop it. All right. But you could have done something after. What are you talking about? What happened to you when they brought Pa's killer in? What stopped you from taking him then and there? Stop me? What stopped me, Verge? The law! food on the table, you two haven't had a bite to eat. I brought some steak and all the trimmings. Well, you don't have to fix ours. We ain't hungry. You won't eat, but you've got room for that. Why don't you run along back home? Cleve and I got some hard talking to do. Do you want me to leave? You better go, Marcy. But I'm one of the family. Well, I'm going to be. That's no way to start a marriage. Secrets all over the place. Look, Marcy, the times you move pretty quickly, boy. I wasn't more over the hill before you were cozying up to her. That's not true. You and I never meant that much to each other. Oh. I seem to remember hearing you say we did. Anyway, that don't matter now. As soon as this is over, I'm selling my half of the ranch and getting out. You can't. Paul's will says you can't settle unless I do, and I'm not about to. Well, now. Seems Marcy ain't the only thing you stole. Now stop that! Stop that, both of you! You ought to be ashamed. Your father just buried, and you two fighting like dogs over a bone. Yes, sir, Cleve boy. You can move real quick when you want to. When I come to that desert rat the night, Pa, you don't do nothing about it. The law stopped you. House Cartwright's kind of law. Well, it ain't gonna stop me. I'll tell you why. Because one way or another, I'm gonna see that Johnny Mule laying dead at my feet, just like you've seen Paul laying at yours right here. There's still one man left in this family. It wasn't Cleve's fault Hoss Cartwright deadlocked that jury. If Cleve had done what he ought to have done, there wouldn't even have been a trial. But, uh, we're gonna fix that, ain't we, Cleve? Right now. Don't do it, Cleve. Go home, Marcy. No. I said go home. arguing about. All I heard was Mr. Loudon a hollering and such. He stopped when I stepped up on the porch and knocked on the door. Now, Johnny, let me get this straight. You say you heard Dave Loudon yelling, and you still knocked on the door? Well, sure, I had to let him know I was there, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, sure you did, Johnny. Now, after Dave let you in, what'd you see? Well, I seed old Dave. His face was all red like the waddles on a turkey gobbler. He was... Hey, Hoss, did, did you know that there's wild turkeys again in the brush up on Backbreak Ridge? Uh, some old homesteader feller just moved out and let his whole flock there to go wild. Hey. You and me, we ought to go get us a couple of them. They's mighty good eating. Yeah, yeah, Johnny. We will later, but right now we got some other things to tend to. Now, after Dave let you in, what else did you see? Well, there was uh, 
and table and uh, and chairs and a door. You know the the door what goes to the bedroom was it was tight closed. Yeah. Now that table. Did you notice anything special about the table? You mean was they eaten? Like I said in court. Look, Hoss, you you don't have to go sneaking up on things. You you want to know something from Johnny Mule, you just asked him. Yeah, fine, John, I, I know that. Sometimes it's better if you can remember all by yourself. I can't cipher numbers, and, and I never learned how to read, and, and I, I got to sign my name with a mark, but, but there's one thing that Johnny Mule can do, and that's remember what he seed. Good. And Johnny, what was on that table? There was a company tablecloth with little red and white squares. Uh, there was company dishes uh, and bread and butter in a big pitcher of milk and baked beans. It was fresh bread. There was two plates. One of them was almost full and one was about empty. First time he never asked me to, to step in and, and set. <laughs> he just give me the three dollars and close the door. Yeah. Now, John, let me get this straight. You went out there to sell Dave your knife for three dollars so you'd have money for food, right? Yeah. First time he never asked me to step in and set a while. <sighs> Johnny. <laughs> I could sure uh, use some of them beans. How did you know Dave would buy the knife? He seen me cleaning a trout with it one time. And he said to me, any old time you want to sell that knife, I'll sure buy it. He, he said he had one just like it when he was a kid. Did you tell your lawyer that? He never asked me. Doggone it. You should have told him, Johnny. See, everybody thought you were lying. If they'd have known why Dave wanted that knife, they might have believed you. Could have made a big difference. This here next trial, you going to be on the jury? No, no, Johnny, I can't. But I'll guarantee you this. You're going to have a better lawyer. Uh, you're the only one that knows I didn't kill Mr. Loudon. You got to be on my jury. Johnny, it's, it's impossible. If you ain't, they're gonna hang me. Anybody with you, Marcy? No, I'm alone. What are you doing out this time of night? Virgie Cleaver going to try to kill Johnny Newell. Well, I can believe Virgie would try a fool thing like that, but Cleve's too level-headed. He's been acting different since Virgie came back. I tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't listen to me. He sent me away. I had to come and tell you. I don't want Cleve getting killed trying to do something that the next jury is going to do anyway. Well, you did the right thing. You won't hurt them, will you? Marcy, I don't want to hurt anybody. Now, the best thing you can do is keep them boys away from this jail. They wouldn't listen to me. Marcy, there's another deputy playing poker over in the Silver Dollar. Tell him I need him and a couple of volunteers to stand shotgun.
Come on. Where? Johnny, I'm putting you in the solitary cell for your own protection. No, I'd sooner stay right here, Sheriff. You must have heard what the lady said. Mounted men could gun down on you from out there. Move! I can't go in there. Johnny, I'm not asking you. Come on, oh, move! No. Come, Come on, on, please! Come I can't, on. can't go in that dark place. Shots. How's the sheriff? He's alive. That's what you mean. Doc says he'll be a while getting on his feet. And uh, no trace of Johnny Mule? We didn't find any. We got a couple of dozen men out there tracking. It's just too dark to find him. We'll get him in the morning. You heard about Johnny Mule? Yeah, how did it happen? Split the sheriff's skull and rode out. First paw, now the sheriff. That's what Hoss Cartwright's turned loose on us. Look, we'll find him tomorrow. The next jury will vote to hang him. If he lives to stand trial. Whiskey. Say. Busted out of jail last night and practically killed the sheriff doing it. Busted out? The deputy's foreman of posse asked me to come to get you three. Be right with you. How'd it happen? The sheriff was switching Mule to the solitary cell and Mule jumped him. Why the switch? Marcy told the sheriff that the Loudons were coming in to take care of Mule themselves. Cleave to? Yes, cleave to. What do you expect after what you did to that jury? Well, I shouldn't expect Johnny Mule to break out of jail. That's for sure. All right, all right. How the posse split up? Three groups. The one forming at Lassiter's is going to uh, sweep through the Red Hill country. What about the others? The deputy uh, is heading for the foothills. The rest are starting down with the lake. What group are you with? Red Hill country. Uh, either the Loudons with you? I'm not sure. Joe, you head for the foothills. All right. Now, I'll, uh, I'll join the lake group. Hoss! You better go with Candy. Right. Candy. Yeah. I'll saddle up and catch you later. Right. trees. I got knocked off my horse. I fell down in amongst the rocks. Well, what are you doing here, anyhow? 
I didn't know no other place to go. You was the only one, Hoss. The only one. Believe me. Johnny. Johnny. You're still wanted for killing a man. You know I didn't do that. Oh, Johnny, I don't know that you didn't. I, I'm just not convinced that you did. There is a difference, you understand? But them others, they, they wanted to hang me. Well, it, it ain't up to them now. It's a new jury that's got to decide it. And what you did to the sheriff didn't do your case no good, neither. Oh, he, he wanted to put me in that dark little place, huh? But, Johnny, it was for your own good to keep Cleve and Verge from trying to kill you. Oh, I ain't never been locked up, Hoss. I, I don't like them bars. I don't like walls. he could have gone from here. The lake or past the creek into the hills. Won't be hard to find out. The creek bed's muddy. Bound to be tracked. Don't take no chances. Come on, Gabe. Okay, give the horses a breather. You hear something? No. Well, you've been sniffing back there ever since you met us. Hoss was supposed to have joined us. He should have been here half an hour ago. Well, if it weren't for him, ain't none of us would have to be here. There's nothing I can do, Johnny. Well, just help me to get away. I promise you, I'll never come back no more. Johnny, th there's laws. I ain't got no choice. I go back. I gotta stand trial again? Yeah. And them folks say, they say I did it. They hang me. It's a law, Johnny. For that next jury, they vote to kill me. And you don't have to feel nothing, because it ain't your doing no more. I th thanks for what you already done for me. Johnny, where are you going? Well, if I'm going to get hanged for, for something I didn't do, they ain't going to shoot me like no animal in a cage or something hanged up for skinning. Look, I want to help you. But now we're going to have to do it the right way. Now, if you'll promise to stay right here and let me go in and talk to the sheriff about a change of venue. I don't even know what that means. Johnny, all it means is that we'll take you to another town where you'll have a better chance for a fair trial. It's the only chance you got, Johnny. There must be a hundred men out there looking for you. A hundred men? Looking for Johnny Mew. I wonder how many ever looked for who was hiding in Loudon's house the day he got killed. Johnny. The sheriff looked. He couldn't have looked very hard. 
Johnny, everybody makes mistakes. This sheriff is one of the finest fellows I ever knew, Johnny. And if you'll promise me to stay here while I go in and talk, it's, just promise me that. I can't. Johnny, you're going to stay if I have to tie you to a post. I can't go back. They ain't going to lock me in that little iron box. I can't. Johnny. I can't go back to house. I don't want to hurt you none. Look, you get over against that stall there and put your put your hands up. Johnny. I didn't want to hurt you none. Whole day gone. Three posses riding since dawn. They haven't brought him in yet. Stay put, Tom. Sit down. Look, if you really want to help, you can saddle my horse. I got to know what's going on before dark. The doc said you'd stay put and get plenty of rest, or you're going to be in worse shape than you're already in. Boss, I should be out there. Yeah. It'd take two men to haul you back in after you fell out of your saddle. Tom, there's plenty out looking for Johnny Mule now. Yeah, sure, including the Loudons. Boss, it's my job to keep Mule alive until a jury decides different. Tom, the Loudons ain't likely to find him. And neither is anybody else for a while yet, anyhow. Uh, you sound awful sure. The posse's only got a couple hours of daylight left. And they're looking a long ways from the right place. Well, where is he? Oh, so I'm not asking you as a friend. I'm asking you as an officer of the law. Well, I'd like to... I'd like to do a little talking first, if I could, Tom. You're aiding and abetting a fugitive, Hoss. Now, I want to know where you got him hid. Well, I can't recall just offhand, and I don't think I'm going to until we get a couple of things straightened out. You're not only breaking a law, you're asking me to help. Yes, I am. Virg Loudon is talking lynch and murder. Now, if he can't find Johnny Mule, ain't no way you can put that on, is there? So in a way, I'm sort of doing you a favor, ain't I, Tom? Uh, no matter what you say, Hoss. I can't break the law I've sworn to uphold. All right, then, bend it a little. Until I can get a good lawyer to change the venue over Carson City. We can get some guards that you can trust to get him there alive. You really believe he's innocent, don't you? I don't know. All I know is that I got me a bunch of that stuff that you lawmen call reasonable doubt. Even after what he did to me and you? Oh, Tommy is trying to save his life. That don't make him guilty of murder. Well, no, but it don't prove him innocent either. Wait a minute. Now, what was done in regards to checking out his story about that strange fella or whoever it was out at the Loudons? Well, you heard me in, in the trial. He never even mentioned another man till he was sitting in that cell for four days. You heard my story about the knife, too, didn't you? Well, that'll come up in the retrial. If we can get him back for a retrial. Still Creek. No sign of fresh tracks. Well, we'll head west and keep going as long as there's light enough to see by. Here you are, Tom. Maybe it'll make you feel a little better. Found him yet? No, but we will. Before Verge and Cleve kill him, or after he kills one of them? Oh, Marcy. Johnny Mule doesn't want to kill anybody. Well, you're the only one in the world who thinks that. Marcy, you're not doing yourself any good hanging around here. You ought to be home in bed. 
Where's the doc? In his office, I guess. Why? The doc's in his office. Where have you been? I've been busy. Well, you sure voted right, buddy. We flushed Johnny Mule out of the rocks behind Loudon's. He shot Verge. He slipped us before we could ring him. Is Verge dead? I don't know. Even if the doc gets there in time, I wouldn't hope too high. The rock's back of Loudon's. You knew he was hiding there and you wouldn't tell me? He wasn't hiding there, Sheriff. Are you sure it was Johnny Mule? Of course I'm sure it was Johnny Mule. You saw him? It was dark. We were fanned out. Verge must have ridden right over top of it. Johnny Mule fired three rifle shots, hit Verge twice. Huh. So none of you actually saw him, did you? We didn't have to. Well, who did you think it was, Mr. Cartwright? That mysterious stranger again? The one that nobody ever sees? It's your fault. If you hadn't protected that murderer, Verge would never have gotten shot. Marcy, Verge is hurt bad. All the more reason he needs a nurse. Don't tell me you were fool enough to hide him. Well, I, I don't know about the fool part, but I knew where he was, yeah. And I didn't tell nobody, no. Well, if you don't cooperate this time, I'm going to put you under arrest for harboring a known fugitive. Tom, give me no daylight. I'll bring him back to you. I promise you. I'll give him my word. Yeah, if you're lucky, he's probably halfway to Arizona by now. I'm going to go check, see if they found the dog. i got to get out to the loudness. Tom. You're not going any place. Sheep, you're in here. Tell him I'll drink that coffee. That's my pony, Mr. Cartwright. What are you doing here? Same thing you're doing. Looking for Johnny Mule. Well, you heard Candy say that they'd flushed him up there to Loudon's. Yeah, I heard that. I heard you, too. Now, he can't be in two places at once. So where is he? Well, you mean that uh, you believe me instead of Candy? I asked you a question. You better answer me. Well, I'd like to know what you're doing here instead of at the Loudons. Because I'm chasing a killer. Oh. Most women that I know had a brother-in-law shot and maybe dying that'd be there by his side, offering all the help and comfort they could. It'll give a lot of people comfort if I get my sights on Johnny Mule. You, uh... You're a good shot, huh, Marcy? Good enough. You know, when something's troubling me, I don't like to get rid of it until I can get all the facts kind of straightened out in my mind. That's why I voted not guilty at the trial. There were just too many questions unanswered. Never mind the speeches. Just tell me where I can find Johnny Mule. Furge was shot with a rifle. Johnny ain't even got one. Those fool questions will be the death of you. Had it kind of rough, hadn't you, Marcy? You folks being dead and losing the ranch and all that. Don't worry about me. I'll do all right. Hell, you were telling around that you and Verge are going to get married. That is, until he ran out on you. And now it's you and Cleve. But of course, you knew that Cleve would just be a hired hand until his pa died. 
Marcy, you say you're good with a rifle. How good are you with a knife? You really had it figured out nice for yourself, didn't you? Mr. Loudon dead, Johnny Mule blamed for it. You had Cleve and that whole ranch all yourself. Yeah, real nice until Verge rode back, right? You took long enough. I want to make sure I heard everything. Did you? Oh. Yeah, yeah, enough to make me want to cut my throat. Pops! Oh. I was sleeping out in the bushes. I, I heard a shot. Oh. Yeah, she wanted to see me dead, Johnny. Why? Well, I reckon I was asking too many questions. What do you mean? Well, I mean, Johnny, that she wanted a ranch and a husband bad enough she put a knife in an old man and was going to let you hang for it. days I kept voting to hang you. I guess I decided you were guilty the first time I looked at you. Well, I never in my life even judged a horse on first sight. I was ready to judge a man that way. I'm never going to do that again. That's the last we'll be seeing of Johnny Mule, huh? How come he didn't want to come work for us? Oh, I offered him a job, but he felt it'd be better out by himself. He told Cleve the same thing. Uh, candy? It's your mail. Oh, thank you. Go by the Loudon place? Yeah, Doc's got Verge sitting out in the sun already. He'll be riding round up in a month. Good. He's a lucky man, considering how bad gut shot he was. Hey, you know, maybe I ought to ride over there a couple of days a week and help him out while he's healing. It's a good idea. Is it all right, Pa? Sure. Hey, good enough. Ross? Yeah. I got a message for you from the yeah. sheriff. He's sending out a posse to bring you in. So 11 men and a uh, prosecuting attorney can buy you the biggest dinner in Virginia City. <laughs> hey, Craig, we can get this wagon fixed before they get here. Bring that wheel over. Boss, I just realized why you've never been found guilty. Man. What's that? Because the jury was afraid to ask the condemned man what he wanted for his last meal. <laughs> <laughs>